Hi, Peter Haynes here, the Townscape Heritage Manager for Stockport Council. I've been working on this project for the last three years. We were awarded some cash back in 2019 from the National Lottery Heritage Fund to basically bring this forgotten street within Stockport back to its best. And I'm going to show you a few examples of what we've done. So behind me is uh, the former Martins Bank. The building's in uh, a, a poor state of condition, let's say, and you can see Budlia has now taken root and, and is making itself at home. Luckily, we've got some grant funding uh, to put towards this, which will see the frontage taken down and a much more sympathetic frontage re-added to the building, improving the heritage value and reducing maintenance over the course of its life. Years of lack of uh, investment from the private sector has led to need for regeneration here, where buildings have literally fallen down in the past. So public sector have stepped in, along with the National Lottery Heritage Fund, to really accelerate the regeneration of this area and bring it back to its former glory. Not maintaining a building is bad for the immediate future, but if it's left and left and left, you'll end up with an absolute catastrophe. And funnily enough, I'm stood exactly where a BMW met its uh, maker um, when the front of this building actually toppled down and buried it under a pile of bricks. My name is Paul Kelsall. I'm one of the directors at Kelsall Architects. We are an architectural practice based here in Stockport Old Town. We work with a lot of heritage buildings in and around the Old Town. A do-nothing approach is a really bad idea because you're effectively kicking the can further down the alley. So a regular maintenance regime annually or every five years can save you a big chunk of money when those problems exacerbate over time. What can be the most damaging thing for a historic building? Generally, it's prolonged issues, so prolonged water ingress. So the most damaging thing is not dealing with the issues when the issues arise. Rebecca Goddard here, the Townscape Heritage Assistant. It's my first job since uni and it's great to be based in Stockport. I grew up here as a child and it's great to see the changes that the underbanks have seen. It's nice to be part of that journey. It's now become a place for me to work and play. We go to the bars, we go to the shops. It's great to bring my family here and to give them a little tour of what's going on. And It's just positive, the whole thing, and it's nice to see people here, the activities that we host, and to see the area full of life as it once was. The improvements uh, on the street mean that everybody raises their standard as well. All the businesses have started thinking about putting plants outside the business to make things look nicer because you see an improvement in other areas and so you feel more pride in your own. I just walked down on the bank, you can see the impact the fund's had. It's changing the feeling down here, like there's actually something happening. It's a nice place to be at the minute. This is a really beautiful street. Businesses like us and uh, our neighbours and our um, companions nearby, you know, we're lucky to be here and uh, we're just going to keep moving forward and to make it as amazing as possible. The difference has been immense. The focus now on the underbanks and now the heritage fund is here. There's a real sense of community now and a pride in the area and everybody's pushing for this area to become the next best thing in Stockport because it is the best street in Stockport. There's more vitality right through from early morning office footfall to evening trade with the bars and, and eateries. And I could wholeheartedly say that that's been almost entirely down to the National Heritage Funding, their influence in the area and their, their, not just their financial input, but their enthusiasm for the beautiful place that we have. So, 55 years ago, 1967, the Jimi Hendrix Experience played at the Sinking Ship Club here on Underbanks. We wanted to immortalise it with this mural here behind us by Otto Schade. In terms of maintenance, we made sure that the paintwork was varnished after it was, after it was put on, so it won't fade in the sun and it won't flake with the weather. This wonderful building has got such rich history in the area. It was left to fall into uh, disrepair uh, under a pub chain that had it previously but the council compulsory purchased it and we spent the best part of a million pounds bringing it back to its former grandeur. It's about keeping the quality at the level we've already achieved because that's what keeps the place vibrant. It's what keeps people wanting to come back and experience the underbanks both now and for, and for future generations. Hi, I'm Chris from yoursashwindows.com. We are a company who specialise in repairing, maintaining and installing new wooden sash windows. All around Stockport, but specifically here on Underbanks, is a wide range of timber windows, shapes and sizes, condition, good condition, bad condition, 
and of course ages and states of repair, which is where we come in. So I'm just going to show you some of the good and the bad. We're on the steps of St Peter's Gate Bridge here and right behind me you can see a sash window that's had better days. And this is what happens to windows if you don't look after them properly. The window itself is propped up by a tin can which says that the weights and the cords are probably gone. The rot is clearly showing. They've ruined the window. They need a new window. Just around the corner from Underbank just now but I thought this particular building was worth pointing out. If you look at the bottom right window, the sill slopes inwards as it does on the top right window. And the top left window slopes inwards as well. It's probably down to subsidence, uh, as you can see from the bricks under the bottom right window, but it just makes a curious view. Here we have a fabulous example of a recently uh, refurbished double glazed window. You wouldn't be able to tell it's double glazed because it's slim double glazing with a very small gap in between the two panes of glass, but it's highly energy efficient. My top tip to keep buildings tip top is regular, regular maintenance, annual checks and dealing with issues when they arise. So here's a great example. So something as simple as a lick of paint on here can save a lot of trouble down the line where obviously water can get in here and it's only going to degrade this uh, softwood and then your glass potentially popping out. So sometimes it's a few pence spent now will save you a lot of pounds in the future. So here's a fantastic comparison. 15 Lower Hillgate, which we've, we've finished uh, restoring uh, to a very high standard. It basically required the full rebuilding of the frontage of this property because the previous one had been allowed to go to rack and ruin. Much like uh, 11 to 13, which is one that we're about to bring forward. A 10 second fix is going to save you a lot of money down the line. Uh, you can see here that the rainwater downpipe has, has just come away, um, which is going to cause a, a lot of water to just cascade down over the, over the top of the shop front. It's only going to cause more damage as, as time goes by. We've got 18 to 20 Lower Hillgate here, um, another building that had fallen into disrepair. Currently, as you can see on this one, to bring it uh, forward as a hairdresser's and a bar above. My name is Peter Jameson. I'm the Contracts Director at Hora Heritage, who are carrying out the conservation works on 18 to 20 Lower Hillgate. Some of the common problems you have with a building like this that's been left for such a long time is the deterioration of the brickwork behind the actual render and the stonework. Bringing it back to brick gives a much better look. Um, we can use lime mortar in the joints and importantly, it's zero maintenance once it's done. So by bringing back sort of the heritage uh, of these buildings, you're actually saving yourself money in the long run. The building on my left is a prime example of what the building on my right used to look like before the render was taken off. Now taking the render off, we've gone back to the historic and fabric of the building and what it was when it was first built, which is the way it should have always been. It's fantastic for the client and the members of the community to see that the lottery funding are giving massive amounts of money to help prepare and restore these buildings. As you can see, the windows that were installed in a complete replica of the original fabric of the building. It's amazing to see all them buildings that were falling down now being restored and being occupied by some amazing cool creatives as well as amazing eateries. So I'm excited to see what more the Heritage Fund can bring to the area and where it's going to go in the future. It's not just buildings that we're investing in in the area, we're also investing in all the spaces in between. These are all built to last and hopefully we won't need to be revisiting the public realm for a long, long time. The funding's important because it continues the regeneration of a really important and historic area of Stockport Town Centre. But Stockport can't do it on its own. We need the building owners and the, and the private landlords who are involved in this area also to, to step up and be involved in the regeneration work that we're doing.